Today, I bring to you guys the strongest curved blade build in Deepwoken. Trust me guys, I spent hours in the trenches of the Deepwoken builder to put together the most stacked curve build for you guys. I managed to fit in reinforced armor and heretic suture, so not only is this build hella tanky, but it can absolutely burst out damage like nothing. It's cooked to the most devious level. But if you don't take my word for it, take his. This is Spiders, a top 250 gal main that mostly makes videos on the wind achievement. And he gave his stamp of approval, so you know I was cooking in that kitchen. And with that said, let's get straight into how this build was cooked together. This build runs reinforced armor, making it extremely chunky and really hard to kill. And the 90 fortune requirement of reinforced armor allows this build to easily hit 550 HP. We also pick up Heretic Sutra, Lucia Mine, and Piercing Will. Combined with a few other damage multipliers, this build sits at a very comfortable 40% damage multiplier. Now let's get straight into the weapon that we use in this build. Don't fuck with me! I have the power of God and anime on my side! Wait, you ah! The main weapon of choice is the free star damage curve blade of the winds. This weapon is insanely rapid with a 0.8 swing speed. And with that speed, you can honestly just stop using your man just halfway through the fight and start swinging mindlessly and you'll probably win. And especially when combined with a synergy that I'll talk about later in the video, the curve blade is just a really strong weapon. The curve crit is also just really good. You can just throw it out and it will probably land. As strong as the crit is, it is a multi-hit move, so it does have auto power frames. So you can be punished through them, so just be careful. With that said, let's get into some of the oaths that you can run with this build. Moving on to the oath of this build, I decided to pick up Dawnwalker because Radiant Kit goes absolutely badonkadonks. In all sorts of combos, you can just sneak it in mid-combo and it will probably land more often than not. However, if Dawnwalker isn't your cup of tea particularly, you can always pick up another oath. The only other oath I'd really recommend would be Contractor because Contractor is pretty strong. Or you could pick up Blind Seer, which in my opinion is really slept on and a very powerful oath. The fast swing speed of Curve can synergize pretty well with Tranquil Circle, so you can win most of those parry trades. However, those are pretty much the only two oaths I'd recommend other than Dawnwalker. Now let's get into the Mantra loadout that I use for this build. After bashing my head into my keyboard, I'm pretty sure I cooked up the best mantra list. Well, the mantras are still pretty much all preference, so if you think your wind gun is cool, I mean, go for it, keep it. But these are the mantras I run. So first up, we have Gale Launch, which lets you fly around the map with the hitbox of a truck. This allows you to win most of your mantra trades because of how big the hitbox really is. It's also extremely satisfying to land combos with Gale Launch, so you definitely want to pick this up. Next, we have Champion's Wealth Road. Honestly, there's something really special about taking someone in a 360 then dashing them halfway across the map. Next up, we have Rising Wind, and all I have to say is after landing an uppercut into Rising Wind, I start tweaking because of how satisfying that shit is. It's genuinely a must pick for every single Gale build. Next we have Twister Kicks, a relatively new mantra that's hella satisfying to land, looks goofy as hell and has a dumb hitbox, definitely one of the better picks. Next up you want to pick up Astral Wind, because you know, it's Astral Wind, there isn't much that needs to be said there. Oh and there's an honorable mention, I'd recommend you to go pick up Heavenly Wind, I just can't be asked to go roll for it, but it is really good. And finally, this should be the full mantra list that I recommend going. Once again, if you want to put your own mantras in there, go for it, change all you want. I'm just giving you the source, it's up to you if you want to take my advice or not. Now, you might be wondering how exactly I cooked this build together, so if you want to see the stats, keep watching. But before that, let's get straight into the fun part of this build and that's the crazy synergies and playstyle this build has I've got three different synergies that will allow you to push this build to a whole new level. That if done right, your opponent should be bugging out from how annoying you are to fight. First up is the tech abused by several top 250s and experienced win players. And that's Geldash crit stacking. This throws your opponents off a lot, making your crit so much easier to land. I mean, bro, you're literally a flying blade blade at this point. To do this tech, you gotta press your crit key, which for me is my middle mouse bar, and then press Q almost instantly after. With enough practice, you should be able to do it pretty consistently. Or, you know, just slap on a cheeky macro. The next synergy is something that's truly busted, and it's something that not a lot of players know about. But before that, let's talk Talk about roll casting, a tech abused by several high chime players. It gives you a boost in speed while casting your mantra, but this alone isn't that powerful, but we can make it even stronger. In fact, I've been using this tech throughout this entire video, and it's what I call the Kaido Bypass. God, that's so corny. Anyway, what I mean is using roll casting with rising wind to completely bypass block. Yeah, this tech is just straight up busted. Once again, all you do is use your mantra that instantly press Q to hit that roll cast. Just throw it out after a parry trade or when your opponent's blocking and you're most likely to land it. And finally, this last one's more of a playstyle than a tech. And that's to play like a complete monkey. I mean, jump around, air swing, throw in the odd 360, just play as high progressive as possible. And that's because for some reason, Gale is just really hard to punish. And you need to take advantage of that. Ensure your opponents are like this guy by the end of the fight. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't. This shit no more, man. Now that we've covered all the source of this build, let's get into the exact stats. Once again, this build is pretty cooked. You can make it with any race that you like. You also want to go free song chunk, free edition, and six vitality. I didn't do that on this build, but that's what you definitely want to do. Now, if you want the full build link with all the talents, mantras, and stat order, join GG slash Kaido's commandment. And with that said, Kaido out.